What's up everybody? This is Chef Ali from Fettisau Barbecue in Brooklyn, New York. Today, we're gonna make some pulled pork. Going into the refrigerator. We got our beautiful bone-in heritage pork butt. I can, I can already tell it's heritage, why? Because of the beautiful red coloration. Uh, commercial pork is pale and white and just lacks that vibrancy. And this is one of the many things that I love so much about, about these heritage breeds. And the way it cooks is incomparable and the flavor is incomparable. Uh, as you'll see, it looks really, really good when it's cooked up. So the first step, basics of barbecue starts with protein and your dry rub. Your dry rub is whatever you make of it. No matter what kind of spices, you're gonna have a base that's gonna be mainly brown sugar or some kind of sugar. You're gonna have salt, you're gonna have black pepper in there somewhere, and then any spices you want. Our dry rub, which kind of helped put us on the map, is extremely unique, and then it contains some spices that create flavor profiles that you would not find pretty much anywhere. And one of the coolest things about feta sao in general one of the things I love the most about this place is that we're not beholden to any particular type of barbecue style. Um, our owner, Joe Carroll, traveled around and sort of cherry-picked very carefully elements of different types of barbecue that he wanted to bring back to his restaurant. And then under all of that, we have items that you would most commonly find at a Jewish, traditional Jewish delicatessen, which is, you know, a very, very cool and actually really natural combination. So we have the half-sour pickles, we have new kraut, we have in my opinion, the best pastrami on earth. Come try the pastrami, come try the pastrami. I don't mean now, I mean when we have it on weekends. It's better than Katz's, and I love you Katz's, but. The next step, I'm gonna find my weapon. Makes me feel tough in the kitchen, keeps people away from me, and I use it on Halloween. The meat hook is a really handy tool because a lot of times um, you're dealing with proteins that are really heavy and also wet, you know, so you don't want to drop. Also, one thing about feta sao is that when you come to this restaurant, you are basically in the room with us, which is one thing I always loved as a customer. It's a very intimate experience. Most people have a kitchen. We're right in the restaurant with you. So this is like pageantry. It's cool to watch. Um, and the last thing you want to do is drop one of these uh, bad boys in the garbage can, which I have in front of people. We all make mistakes. The hook keeps it nice and secure. We get excess moisture off. So here's a really cool tip about using dry rub. You can kill a dry rub really easily with too much moisture on your meat. What I mean by that is, if you're doing multiple things with a certain amount of dry rub, like let's say we're gonna you know, do four shoulders, the wetness is gonna start creating balls, inconsistencies in the rub. In order for the flavors of the, your dry rub to come through, you want a perfect consistency every time. If you're reusing dry rub after you've already used it on proteins, put it through a sifter and make sure that it's super fine. You will get a much better result uh, flavor-wise and you're gonna get a much more attractive result as well. So, what we're gonna do first, just to get some of this excess moisture off the fat cap. Another thing I love so much about these is how beautifully even the fat cap is. And that's something that we've come to expect from Heritage. Um, these cook so reliably. And, you know, I don't have to anyone who's in the restaurant business or any home cooks, you know, having a product that you are familiar with that's the same every time and cooks the way you want it to every time is just a huge deal. One thing we, just one of the many things we appreciate about Heritage. So now that we've got the excess moisture off the top, we're gonna thoroughly, thoroughly coat. Now this stuff is called rub for a reason. Because you wanna rub it on. Very important. You don't just wanna sprinkle it on, you wanna integrate those flavors into the meat. Because as this meat cooks, it's going to lose water, it's going to evaporate, the cap is going to baste it with flavor. And wait till you see what we get. thing of beauty. Let some of that excess smoke go, although you won't necessarily have to worry about this in a home smoker. Try on nice and tight into the smoker for 13 hours. 
210 degrees, but don't freak out if it's a little hotter. People make too big of a deal about it. It's, if it's 210, 220, 225, people make too big of a deal of, out of temperature in barbecue. You want to keep the temperature low, but if you're cooking at 225, 230, it's not the end of the world. You just have to adjust the times accordingly, make sure that that protein is cooking nice and slow. She rests, we close the door, we hear the air, and everything is ready to rip. So now we got the door closed, the pulled pork is in, that's gonna be in there for about 12 hours at 210 degrees. When it comes out, it's going to be extremely hot, so we're gonna do something called letting it cool. When it's done cooling, we're going to pull it. I'm gonna show you some little nuances in pulling the pork um, so you can just make it look as nice as you can and, 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 and get some of that uh, unwanted fat out while keeping it nice and moist and flavorful. All right guys, so we've been waiting patiently for the last 12 hours, just literally standing here silently. Uh, and now they're finally ready. So we're gonna take the uh, pork shoulder out. Oh, wait a second, you know what? Continuity issue. You shouldn't film me actually getting, because these are from last night, and there's four on the rack. Continuity. Could it just, you know, I'll just sneak in here and pretend that it's the, and pretend it's the one that, that I cooked. This is definitely the one that I cooked before, for sure, so. Here we go. There are not four there. Let's see what you come off, Tyler. So that, I don't know about you, but that does, that does look rather delicious to me. It looks very, very, very good. Um, so like notice, there's like some things happening here, right? So it's not as simple as just, you know, like we were talking about colors and textures before. So like <clears throat> the fat cap has sort of exploded based at the bottom where it's opened up, you're gonna have this deeper coloration where the smoke got through. So that's gonna be a different texture and a different color. So when we pull that up, it's gonna offer like this, it, 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 it's gonna look good. It's gonna make it look more appetizing. Um, and the, we were talking earlier about like the evenness of the cook. Um, notice how the fat cap is just super easy to get off. Um, it's just minimizes waste for us. Um, and like I said, just gives us like a product that we, 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 can, we can rely on and that's huge especially when it comes to um, stuff that has to cook for so long and there's so, you know, we really don't have a margin of error with this because we, we serve it. And we work, on such, we work in such small batches that what we make, that's all we have for the day. So. Remember how I said that bone equals flavor? All that beautiful red meat that was against the bone that's gonna add another, yet another layer of flavor and texture to this. Remember, I don't have any feeling on my fingers or mouth anymore for years. What I'm tasting is beautiful porky flavor. And right behind it is the coffee, the brown sugar, the spices from the dry rub. But the most important thing is that you're tasting the pork. You never wanna over rubber, you never want to, you know, some people even put rub on late, which is crazy, like after it's pulled. Let, let the dry rub stay in the background. You're not smoking the dry rub, you're smoking the meat. So always remember, mm, shit, that's good. That is so freaking good. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. It's hot. Oh wait, if you have feeling on your fingers or tongue, this is probably gonna need to cool. You want some? Um, so anyway, so now we're gonna pull this, and like I said, this is super hot right now, but you don't have to worry about me because I have literally no feeling in my fingers or my soul. That's not true, just my fingers. Okay, so um, when you pull pork, uh, for those of you that missed the TED talk I did, because it was not very well attended, um, <clears throat> you wanna actually pull it. Don't ever do that, don't ever let me catch you, or someone, don't let ever let anyone catch you doing this. Never, never do this, never do that. Because that is cat food. 
you gotta pull this stuff. Remember how it's gonna look for your guests. Remember how important appearance is for all this. It's easy to make a big pile of protein not look that great. But look at all the colors and textures we have to capitalize upon right now. The fat cap notwithstanding, we wanna put that aside. But I'll show you how to cherry pick from this afterwards because there is some, there are some good little gems in here they are gonna add to this. Trust me, I'm not overthinking this. This is how to pull pork. Pull it. You want strips. And the meat will kind of dictate how it wants to go. This is all in my six part DVD series, of course, uh, but. If they're too big like that, instead of, um, well, I like to snap them in half, but you still have that nice, you know, think of how good this will look on a sandwich. Oh, good. Texture, color. Cool. Let's not lose that. Boom. You see? So you're actually pulling it, and it just looks so much better, and it eats so much better. And it's one of those things that, like, I, I guess it, see, it would seem obvious to people, but, like, I've, I've seen people just mash it between their hands, and, and um, yeah, don't. Don't do it. I mean, I'm not telling you how to live, but like, you shouldn't do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, feta salad is one of the things that we're known for is the broccoli salad. Um, this was the owner's gram, one of the owner's grandmother's staples. Um, and the, the cool thing, so it's just, it's just steamed and cooled broccoli um, with a lemon garlic vinaigrette and um, some red pepper flakes just to give a slight, slight little kick on the back, but it's not spicy. Um, what it does is, what, what I love about it and the reason that our customers love it so much is that it's a really light, citrusy, bright um, um, counter to all of the heavy food we serve. And you know, um, most sides, and we do have some heavy sides too, um, you know, our, our baked beans, you know, our, our collard greens, etc. But um, this is just like, it's, it's, it's refreshing, for lack of a better word. It's super refreshing after you're eating, you know, this, this salty, sweet, super flavorful thing. It's almost like a palate cleanser. Um, and it's also the healthiest thing that I've ever seen served at a barbecue restaurant, so. Um, we also have the German style potato salad, which is one of my favorites because uh, it's mayonnaise free, which I love. Uh, we use really, really good whole grain mustard, really good apple cider vinegar. Um, it's. It's delicious, um, and that's also a cold salad, so um, that's one of my favorites with the pulled pork. Um, and then sauce-wise, you know, everyone has their everyone has their combination, their favorite combinations. Um, we have a sweet sauce, we have a spicy barbecue sauce, we have a Carolina-style vinegar sauce, and we have a spicy mustard sauce. Um, with the pulled pork, for me, just because I'm a Carolina boy, I go vinegar all the way. Um, I also encourage people to mix our sauces, create your own super sauce. And we just went through um, how we prepare one of our staples and our customers' favorites, uh, the pulled pork butt, the broccoli salad, and the vinegar sauce. Um, judging by the looks of this plate, I could tell you that there's definitely some sandwiches in this person's future. Um, remember, when you come to Feta Salad, you get complimentary potato rolls with every order, so sandwiches happen very often here, sometimes unexpectedly. Pulled pork sandwich with vinegar sauce and broccoli salad on the side is I'd say my favorite food. So, um, really happy that I got to make it for you guys today.